Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I think that's good. Very good morning and uh, thanks to the institution for getting me here. The topic is in front of you. I'm going to speak on space and sustainable development. Uh, everybody knows that uh, space is uh, becoming more and more popular around the world and everybody really talks about space in a very big way because almost there is nothing which you can do or you cannot do without space. You connect to your television every day, you are actually connected from space. You go to an ATM for drawing money, you are actually connecting to the space. So without knowing, most of you are connected to space in one way or the other. But today my talk is slightly different. The space, how it can be used, the technology for sustainable development, both in the rural areas as well as in the urban areas. I will be using visuals uh, so that it makes uh, sense for all of you because normally space is that kind of a technology which many people are a little bit afraid of. Uh, it's, Earth is a complex pyramid as uh, as we all know that earth has many constituents which possibly we have not understood even today. It has many different cycles. It could be hydrological cycle, it could be a biogeophysical cycle and it could be many other things including the climate science. So if you are looking at an integrated phenomena of the globe, the story is going to be pretty difficult. So when you look at a pyramid to solve such kind of a complex system, we normally look at the natural resources and also some of the other constituents of the earth like ocean, meteorology as well as the atmosphere and then try to see how we can understand these and how we can sustain our lives by coexisting in a perfect manner. So for that, we can use space technology for developing some of those tools. Typically, we use the space technology in different ways. We have different types of sensors. Most of our satellites are up in space. They are from 600 to 900 kilometer orbit, polar orbiting satellites. They provide a whole lot of our data which can be analyzed on the ground through crowd and grid computing techniques. It could be a simple push broom imaging. It could be stereo imaging which captures the third dimension. And also it could be multi-sensor uh, platforms like three tire imaging system what India has, by, has done which has been pretty interesting as far as providing data on the earth resources. Typically an example of mapping the entire country on a yearly basis, on a seasonal basis can be easily visualized when you start looking at multiple imaging techniques what we use from space. Typically the kind of visual what you are seeing here shows India as well as a particular state, Karnataka, where you are able to see multi-season data being depicted to you, how the humans are using the land. You can get into the cropping system where we start looking at cropping in different conditions. It could be under pre-monsoon condition, post-monsoon condition, it could be in summer. So under these conditions, what kind of cropping system? do we really have in the rural areas and how we can map them from space, how we understand the cropping system and is it possible for us to do the yield prediction even before we have the harvest done. On the same lines, we can look at the forest from the space and also the biodiversity and we start understanding what kind of forests and how the forest produce can be sustained, in what way we can conserve the forest and what kind of biodiversity can be used for medicinal values and things like that. So, what I'm trying to unfold in front of you is the use of geospatial technology, how it can be put into a system, how you can use the remote sensing data from space, how you can use the ground knowledge, put them together towards making better plans for sustainable development. As we all know that uh, India has majority of its area covered for agriculture or for rural areas. So rural development as well as agriculture becomes a very, very important phenomenon. So the tools and technologies what I would like to discuss as part of this particular talk is that expose you to the GIS and spatial analytics, how you use it from space perspectives and see how you can do optimal, optimal management of the natural resources. So 
Typically, we have a particular tool in India which is pretty open and it is available on the web. It is called as Bhuvan Geo Portal. It hosts a whole lot of GIS data of the country. So, a typical front end would look like what you are seeing here. It is a very unique platform which literally talks about layers of natural resources data that can be utilized for varieties of uh, activities particularly pertaining to the land and ocean and other areas. Um, the watershed management is one of the key areas where we will be able to use the terrain information in a very e effective manner for providing excellent data for understanding the slopes, the gradients and the various other terrain parameters. Typically, we are talking about the layers of, of data which would be easily usable on a GIS so that you can integrate multiple layers of data. It could be like uh, a drainage system, the soil information, the slopes, the gradients and geology, geomorphology, settlements and various other activities. So if you take multiple layers of data derived both from the ground and from space, it is possible for you to integrate it on a platform which is like what I said, Bhuvan. It is possible for you to extract very unique information which pertains to a particular piece of land. For example, if, a, if an agriculturist would like to know on a particular area what kind of an agricultural activity he can take up, it is possible for you to analyze this. Like a doctor analyzes a patient, it is possible for you to analyze multi-layered information which typically fits into the theme of this particular TED talk where we are talking about unfold of the manifold. So we are literally looking at multi-layered system which can be extracted from space and ground data and utilize it for various developmental activities. The other important concept of using space data is that you can generate the height information from space data. We call it as the gradients, the slopes and the aspects can be derived by deriving a digital surface models. There are stereo imaging capabilities from space which enables you to get the height information from space. The height information gives you that kind of an information which is very difficult to measure normally on the ground in a geospatially continuous form. So we call it as the digital surface model or the digital elevation model. When you have this kind of a data, it is possible for you to derive very unique characteristics like the entire drainage network on the ground. See, ultimately water, the way it flows from a point to another point becomes very important for you to harvest the water, preserve the water, store the water and use it for developmental purposes. So if you are able to get that kind of a satellite data derived digital surface model, it helps you in planning your activity on the ground. Large areas in India do have wide varieties of sloping characteristics. So we can do runoff computations. That means if a rainfall happens in a particular area, what will be the speed at which the water will flow away? Will it go very fast? If it goes very fast, is it possible for us to make a stop of that water, hold it for some time and then allow it to flow? These kind of planning can be done so that the water percolates into the soil and you are able to even regenerate the ground uh, groundwater capabilities. So the runoff becomes important, the runoff computation becomes important and the entire data for that you get it from space. Similarly slopes and gradients you can easily plan your ground activities based on that. Like the, the various strata of the soil can be understood both from ground and space. And once you have this, it is also possible for you to reorganize your database with respect to the stream order, the stream order. The stream order tells you the first order, the second order, the third, third order stream. And each of these order also tells you how much amount of water it carries when it really flows. So literally we are mapping the ground from space and trying to understand the ground in a much better fashion so that you can plan your activities in a much more methodical and planned manner so that you can harness the best output from the ground. So typical examples of what you see here in this particular visual is that it is possible for you to have 
different boundaries like watershed boundaries you can have you can have drainage network planted out there and in addition to that you can also have the administrative boundaries so that district wise or taluk wise or even village wise it is possible for you to make these plans so that your water resources plans will go very uh, accurately well in this background if we organize a gis data you will be able to understand how a multi layered gis data can be put into a system which allows you to look into the details of the particular area of interest for example a particular area of interest is taken and we start looking at different maps available for this particular area up to the parcel level where the farmer who is farming in a particular area you are able to even map that level of information so you start start off with a base map base map possibly gives you the boundary of a given area and then you get into the various other layers like what i was talking about in the beginning like the slope map the hydrogeomorphological maps the groundwater prospects map this is a very interesting uh, uh, topic like how you can map even the groundwater from space it is possible for you to have multiple layers of uh, information like it could be geomorphology it could be geology of the terrain we we also map out the structures like the various linears that you watch from space like it could be faulted a fault areas it could be uh, lineaments it could be dikes and various other things a structural map integrated on a gis with your geomorphological maps and geological maps it helps you in understanding where could be the potential for groundwater that kind of maps can be prepared from space and today the beauty is that we have the groundwater potential maps done for the entire country and it can be utilized by uh, the people who are actually looking at uh, the ground uh, particularly from the water perspective on the surface front you can have the surface uh, uh, water bodies as well as the the drainage system and of course depending on the various aspects that you have integrated the kind of interventions what you need to do on the ground can also be figured out like what kind of a development plan i should do on a particular area so that i will be able to conserve and preserve the kind of water which i need and once you bring the the ground perspective of the ownership of each of the parcels of a particular villager it's possible for you to integrate the natural resources data with the the parcel or the ownership data and you will be able to actually address individuals level of action plan like for example a typical water resources map is shown in front of you which clearly shows cadastre wise or parcel wise what kind of an activity can be taken up so that you can have a sustained water resources development program so typically when we look at the gis usage or the layers of gis usage on the ground we look at the scientific part of extracting the data of multiple layers of information participate that take that particular data with the people have people's participation in making them understand the nuances of this particular technology and this entire technology ultimately take it to the field and get it implemented by the local people so this kind of experiments have been done in karnataka it has given some fantastic results in many dry places and today the country itself has adopted integrated watershed development program where the same technology is used in a very very effective way once you integrate multi layer information onto a system like this it is possible for you to use a query engine on any particular parcel and you will be able to understand what is the soil there what is the slope there what is the water resources available there what kind of a, a structure is required so that you can hold the water for some time there and various other activities can be planned this kind of information systems have been made by isro and it has been given out to the uh, common man at the uh, local level so that they will be able to utilize this for a natural resources development a typical example of what happens over a period of time when you try to develop let us say a forest area as you see in this particular uh, visual there are three outputs a time one uh, sorry at a t0 when the program was yet to be started some four or five years later what happens and finally around six or seven years the entire biomass comes up in a big way so it is possible for you to have a sustained vegetation development sustained 
agricultural uh, resources development and various other things. I would like to end before I uh, uh, end. I would like to say that whatever I spoke just now was integrated information system for rural development. But even place like Bangalore, if it is not properly planned and developed, it can become a chaotic place to live. A typical example of 1973 data to something like 2020 data is being shown in an animation which very clearly shows in 73 what it was like it, it moves on from 73 to 2020 and today if you see this is the BBMP boundary B Bangalore has possibly grown beyond its limits and grown in a pretty haphazard way also so is it possible that we can have a very sustained developmental plan drawn even for urban areas which of course is possible with all the technologies available and it is necessary for us to do both urban and rural development using a well sustainable, well planned sustainable growth related activities. Thank you very much.